Hello, I'm Alison Chester Lambert and I'm an astrologer and an author and I'm here to talk to you about the astrology um, for, the, for the week ahead and then going into May. So it's kind of like a, a May astrology report really, but I can't avoid the first, um, the, the next few days in April. So um, what are we blessed with? Um, yeah, we are blessed with some stuff, we are. Um, but first of all, I want to look at um, kind of like the bigger picture, uh, the overall backdrop, if you like. Um, I think there is um, a collective um, free floating anxiety in the air. Um, it's kind of like um, the unconscious is depressed. So that's the collective unconscious is depressed. Um, it's, it's like a, a hangover, if you like. Um, and it is difficult really to to see an end to this um, in the coming year. Um, it, has, it is as a result of changes that we have had to make, probably because of virus, um, other, other changes. Um, and it has created a, a feeling of insecurity, but also a feeling of not being in control of a collective depression, as I say, um, and so um, it's as well to look at the rest of the astrology and see where we can gain some comfort, because I don't see that we, we can get rid of the the collective heavyweight um, that is sort of um, around us at the moment. Um, and to be honest with you, do, uh, times of depression, whether it's a collective depression or an individual depression, are actually good for us. Um, they actually slow us down. And what we're meant to do is we are slowed down into a feminine way of being, not a masculine. So the masculine makes us speed up and the feminine makes us slow down. And the process of slowing down is sometimes the only time that we can actually really hear our soul. And that's because the spirit and the mind um, are always chattering away. They're in they're in masculine energy. They're in air and fire. So so they're chattering away all the time. And the soul often doesn't get heard. I think some people have never heard their soul. Um, and in moments of quiet and depression, we are sensitized. And in that time, if you pick a flower and look at it, you will see tiny little veins and colours that you never saw before because we are all sensitised. So our eyes are sensitised, our skin is sensitised, we our emotions are sensitised. And this is so that we can be open um, to subtle changes, that we can hear the music of the soul, the voice of the soul, the emotion of the soul. Um, we have to be very, very sensitised to hear it because it's quite delicate. Um, so it is a, a good time for meditation, for reflection. Um, and as I say, the clamour of masculine, once silenced, allows us to reach the soul um, deep down inside um, our feminine. And uh, that's a great thing to do. Um, but it can feel a little unsettling, let's put it like that. Um, so we have at the moment uh, three or four planets, including the sun, in the sign of Taurus, which is an earthy sign um, and the earth element. And this is all about nature and it's all about enjoying the birds and enjoying the changing season, the spring, if you're in the northern hemisphere. Um, and it's about feeling the sun and feeling nature and and getting, putting our soul into the envelope of nature, walking, if, if possible, um, in a place that makes you feel very close to nature. Um, because Taurus loves that. Um, and Taurus also loves um, fine dining and that anything sensual on the tongue, uh, good taste, uh, fine fabrics, uh, Taurus is just uh, loves the senses. Um, it has an emotional pleasure in in the sensuality of all our senses. So it's uh, 
so that that's um something to get a hold of if you can <laughs> so um it makes you feel more secure um i want to talk for a moment about this phrase social um distancing um because i i i'm a I am very, very concerned about it. Um, this, uh, the, the distancing we're supposed to do from other people at the moment is symbolised in astrology by the planet Saturn. Um, and Saturn has moved into Aquarius. And traditionally, Saturn moving into Aquarius means isolation, loneliness, loss of individual freedom. So it stands to reason at this time that these are the things that are probably concerning a lot of us. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean social distance. I prefer to think of physical distance. I think when we say you must socially distant, it's like saying you're a social outcast um, or you're, you're socially, so, socially dysfunctional. I would prefer for us all to use the phrase keep your physical distance because that doesn't mean there's something wrong with me socially. It means I have to keep a physical distance because we have to keep an infection or a virus under control and not pass it on. Um, now, that doesn't mean there's something wrong with us socially. So why are we using this word social, which I think is causing a lot of the depression? There is a, a hidden connotation there. And uh, I think that it's responsible for a lot of our isolation at the moment and feelings of probably being unloved, unwanted, even if we don't feel like that, um, there may be a sense of, of not being as comforted um, by the presence of other people as we would like. Um, so it's just something to think about in your mind. Think about physical distance, not social distance. That's not very nice, is it? <laughs> um, I think also what I would like to discuss with you also is um, an asteroid called Ceres. Now I have a story to tell you here about Steve, Steve Rother, um, and what he said to me some years ago when I first started to work for the virtual light broadcast. He said, the group have told me that we should keep our eye on um, a planet called Ceres. And at the time I was like, whoa, it's just a a dwarf planet in the asteroid belt um okay doesn't seem to be any big deal and then he said it to me again oh 18 months two years ago um and i've always remembered that because well you remember when steve tells you something that the group has said <laughs> so well i've had reason just recently to go back into series i've wrote i wrote a book actually um about the dwarf planets and um there is a whole chapter on Ceres in there. Um, and um, I had reason to go back over it for a client. Um, and I suddenly realised the incredible importance of Ceres at the moment. And I looked at the astrology. And yes, there is some very important astrology around Ceres. Currently, Ceres is at a 90 degree angle, angle from Pluto. And that is an angle which is making both of them very alert. They both feel under pressure. They're both working hard out there. And uh, and I realised why this was. Um, so putting it simply, um, Ceres is um, an asteroid or a sorry, a dwarf planet that represents Mother Nature um, and fertility and harvest and the bond between um, a mother and child. So she's responsible for the growth of a seed into maturity. But Ceres also is responsible for the movement of that soul, its growth, its rising up into maturity and wisdom, its withering, its dying, and then its journey in the underworld and its rebirth. Ceres is responsible for that. And she walks with us on that journey. She holds our hand um, in the valley of darkness on that journey. Um, and she tends us. She looks after us while we grow. Now, she's responsible for the growth of crops and vegetation, but she is also responsible for the growth of a human seed as it makes its way into babyhood 
um, and then and into the cycle. And I think at the moment um, she is working exceptionally hard um, because world weather is sort of very strange, um, as we have seen in Australia, uh, even on the west coast of the States and um, in the UK, for instance, we, we have freezing cold weather in April, which is very strange for us by now. It's warming up. Um, and so I'm aware that crops and food security is challenged by this weather. Well, Ceres was introduced into Rome when the Romans were challenged by um, a, a huge loss of crops. Um, they had a drought and uh, they were starving. So uh, they looked around the, the Greek pantheon and said, OK, do you have one that helps with growing crops? And uh, so, uh, yeah, so Demeter in Greek um, and Greece and uh, Ceres in Rome. Um, I guess there is a connection between cereals and Ceres. I don't know. Um, and um, so she was introduced for that reason. And so she was recently her classification was changed and she was very much raised in status um, by awarding her um, the classification of dwarf planet and not asteroid. Um, and so therefore um, she is becoming more and more important in astrology. And thank you, Steve, um, more and more important in the collective. Um, and uh, and so certainly one to watch. Now, she's very, very active at the moment. Um, and so I think it's a great time for us all to think about Ceres and her, her angel wings, if you like, around us as we make this journey um, into the future where we have climate change due to our lack of respect and abuse of the planet, I have to say. Um, we we really, you know, are not treating this planet very well at all. Um, but Ceres is doing her best to help us. Um, so we do have her walking with us. Um, and because she's a goddess of grieving, grieving and growing, um, where there is grief at the moment because there is loss, then she is very evident as she really waits in the wings to take the souls down to the underworld. She's very much in contact with Pluto. Um, and so therefore I'm, I'm just sort of flagging her up at the moment so that we know who to talk to. <laughs> I like talking to planets. I go, Ceres, can you help me out with this one? <laughs> I do it all the time. Um, okay, so what else have we got here? OK, um, we've got a new moon in Taurus on the 11th of May. The new moon in Taurus. I love the new moon in Taurus because it's a big opportunity to do nothing, just be lazy, indolent, eat chocolate, cake, everything that you can't eat at other times um, and just generally enjoy yourself. Um, and um, it's a big celebration, really, of nature. So, uh, you know, just do whatever you feel and luxuriate and enjoy. It's well worth having that one. Um, and on the 26th of May, we have the full moon in Gemini. Uh, sorry, no, the sun is in Gemini, so the full moon is in Sagittarius. You'd think I'd get that right. It's my birthday. You'd think, wouldn't you, really? <laughs> um, so that one is all about um, intellect, learning, education, information that's coming through, making discoveries, that kind of stuff. Um, nothing to do with chocolate. So get all your chocolate eaten early on, right? So get all the chocolate out of the way on the 11th. Um, and um, what else do I have to tell you? I'm looking down at my notes, of course, as I normally do. No, I think we're all good. Um, and I'm just, just going to turn something off there. I'm ever so sorry. I'm really sorry I left something on. I've just turned it off. You didn't notice that at all, did you? Okay, so I'm um, going to say goodbye now. And it was brilliant to talk to you. Um, and I hope to talk to you next month. And um, if you want uh, readings or anything, you know how to get a hold of me, Alice and Chester Lambert. Just Google my name. Um, and I really enjoyed it. And it was great big hug from me. You are not socially distant from me. You are only physically distant from me. Remember that. I love you. Okay then. See you soon. Bye.